Okay, welcome back. This is chapter 12. Chapter 12 is a whole new section. Yeah, the book is broken up into parts. Well, this is the part on system development. So we're no longer talking about the information pyramid and TPS and ERP and all those great little three-letter acronyms. Now we're talking about the steps you have to take to actually build a new system or acquire a new system. Okay, so this phase, this part we're in, is in two chapters. Chapter 12 is the system analysis, investigation, design, investigation, analysis, and design. The next chapter takes the rest of the parts, and we're good to go. Okay, so let's go over the objectives as always. So what are we supposed to learn here? So identify the key participants in this system development process because that is important. Discuss the importance of information system planning. Outline the steps associated with investigation. Discuss some of the tools and techniques. De define the feasibility analysis and describe the, different, the five different categories. Outline the steps associated with system analysis. Discuss some of the tools they use for analysis. Discuss the importance of that, whether or not I'm going to do it in-house or, or buy, the, the make or buy decision. To outline the steps associated with system design. And discuss some of the tools and techniques that are used there. Okay, cool. Uh, I always talk about that gold section because I like to be able to, to go in here and say, you know, why is this important? Well. I will tell you that um, you, systems fail a lot. I mean, the success rate for introducing a new system is, is not as great as you might think. I mean, it's, it's really actually kind of poor. Um, and it's all because people are rushed or somehow they don't, they bypass a couple of steps here in this process and they end up getting something or some vendor comes in and sells them a bill of goods and they end up with something that they just can't use. So it's, it is important not for the business as a whole. Now, on the other hand, if you're one of these people who are participating in that, you don't have to be a designer. I'm not talking about, you know, programmers and that kind of talk. You could be just an accountant in the organization, but you're the person they go to that, that can describe everything, explain how the accounting system works, and you're going to be the one that's going to be participating in these committees to help design the new systems. So you're actually probably a high-powered kind of person and, and that are going to be participating in this thing. So yes, this is kind of important from a, a career progression point of view to be known as the person who actually understands what's going on and that'd be the person you'd go to to ask for how to design. Plus, you get some ownership on the new system coming in. Ooh, sweet. Okay, so let's continue. The first thing to talk about is the people that have to get involved in the design. Because you don't ever want to have just a bunch of geeks running around uh, with pocket protectors designing your system. That won't work. And you also don't want to have a bunch of salesmen running around trying to design your system. You really need a combination of skills and lots of different types of skills. So to show this little goofy diagram here of all the parts for doing this thing. And they show that the project manager is the person who's probably in the center the, the ringleader of this crazy circus. Okay, so yes, you do have, honest to God, you know, CIS students. You have the system analysis people and the programming people, you know, the, the real nuts and bolts kind of folks. But then you have a technical specialist, perhaps, is the one who's going to do the user's manual. They're not necessarily a computer person, but they understand accounting. So, so they're going to write the section on how to do accounting. You're going to have vendors and suppliers you're going to be talking to. Clearly, you're going to have to have the user input because if you ignore them, jeez, what a mess. Stakeholders. Stakeholders are all is a list of people who have a vested interest in this process that you're doing, whatever it is. Okay. So external companies, yeah, you may have to get some other people involved, particularly if you're trying to interface with them. And then you're going to have some sort of an approval process. Now, this approval process could be like a steering committee made up of senior management, or it could be just a project sponsor. Basically, what we're talking about is the boss. Okay, everyone has a boss. And so somewhere, somebody is going to have to decide yes or no, or can we have more money? No. You know, someone's going to have to make some decisions. And so that's the person, the project sponsor or perhaps a steering team, or perhaps both, 
are the ones who actually decide on whether or not we're going to proceed or not. Okay, so that's, in a nutshell, the roles of all these things. You can probably kind of tell that the most important person in this entire process is this project manager, big time. If you've never been a project manager before, I would recommend you don't try it on your own. This takes a little bit of, not just skills, it takes an awful lot of experience. You're, the first time I did a project, oh geez, I learned a lot. And then the second time I did it, well, it was a little bit better. And then by the third time, yeah, okay, I'm, I got this down pat. This is not something you really go to school for much. I mean, you can learn some tricks in, of the trade, but to be good at it, you ha basically you just need some experience. You end up being, you know, a, the ringmaster three ring circus with a whip sometime. But yeah, because this is a circus. Okay. Um. They talk about, yeah, so stakeholders, users, system analysts, all the roles of each one of these people. I kind of covered all that. Um, so <clears throat> here's what the role of this project sponsor, the boss, you know, what the boss is supposed to do. You know, make sure that the projects are aligned to the business goals. Boy, wouldn't that be kind of handy. Gets the budget, gets the staffing, gets all the resources that you need. You know, acts as the champion to gain support from other organizations, right? Identifies and removes barriers, does conflict resolution, blah, 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 blah. So this is a good person. They typically don't get their hands dirty. They typically don't get involved and say, well, I think you need to move this over here to there. You know, they don't get that deep because they're the boss by God. Okay. There are also alternatives to this whole team approach where you have a gazillion different people. If you have a very, very small project, there is a thing called an individual system developer, which basically you ha you wear five hats. I mean, you're all you're all those technical pieces all by yourself. That if it's a small project, that'll work. You also have individual users, where you have just somebody who says, you know, I think I've solved a problem here, but all I need to do is go out and buy this one piece of software, and presto changeo, my life will be simpler. And that'd be kind of cool. And then of course you have a combo where you have maybe a, an in-house developer that's kind of working by themselves. So anyway, the combination, you don't necessarily need, you know, you don't need seven or eight people on here because one person could have multiple hats is, is the takeaway here. Okay, so let's talk about how you start one of these projects. So information system planning, they, they make a distinction here about, you know, this planning for making for information systems. They start with the business's strategic plan. So the, See the difference already? So information system planning is about starting with the strategic plan for the business, integrating your information system plan, and then you end up with some initiatives that you could possibly pursue. So the idea is the, the business strategic plan by itself is not really going to be helpful, and the IS planning by itself is not going to be helpful. You need the two of them together. This diagram, I would have preferred it showing, you know, this plus this equals because it takes both pieces to be able to produce this system development initiatives okay um so this is all about alignment and the, they have another diagram here that talks about in a little bit more detail about you know you have the strategic plan so you have all these overall objectives for the company and then you have some sort of other things and then you identify the projects and set the priorities and Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to go too much into this detail because we're going to show some other types of techniques. But the, the takeaway for this diagram is alignment. Every single project you do has to be aligned with the business goals. You cannot just go do a project that does not meet the meet the business needs. Remember that, that quote? You know, it must meet the you know business needs. Okay, cool. All right. That's what this is all about. When you initiate a system, uh, there is a possibility that you're going to get information, you know, requests from from high up top. You know, somebody at corporate says, well, by God, I think we need a such and such. But most likely, most of the system requests are going to come from the rank and file, the people who come and say, you know, this is taking too long. Uh, if we had an automated system that could help us in this one little spot, uh, that'd be helpful. And so it's often better to get system request ideas from the people actually doing the work rather than the high and mighties who are looking at it from a, a slightly different altitude. The lower the altitude, the more likely you're going to get, 
you know, really concrete kind of ideas you can sink your teeth into rather than lofty goals like, well, we need to decrease our, you know, backlog by 12%. And you go, okay, that's not very helpful. It's a goal, but I don't know what to do with it. You know, actionable intelligence, so to speak. People at the bottom tend to give you more actionable. Okay. They talk about the different types of, um, when you start one of these things, you, um, well, let me go back. Um, there's some talk here about the things you have to consider. And one of them is these critical success factors. You know, there are an awful lot of things that, you know, have to be exactly the way they're supposed to be. You know, these things that are essential to the success of a particular functional area of, of and we're not, at this point, we're not talking about critical success factors of the automated solution. We're talking about critical success factors for the business at this point. So for manufacturing, it's to minimize equipment maintenance cost. Okay. If you can come up with a system that does that, cool. So you need to kind of know where the weak points are, strong points and weak points in the organization. That's what that's all. So it's all about competitive advantage, talking about all sorts of interesting things. They kind of leap ahead and talk about some of the triggers that could cause these things. So you're fat, dumb, and happy, running along just fine, and then all of a sudden, whammo, something's going to happen that, that causes you to, to create an, uh, an automated system. One would be there's some new technology that came out, and you're going to have to deal with it. Or it could be like an opportunity. There's a new technology came out, and you go, wow, that is cool. That's really going to be neat. So this could be a positive and a negative. Mergers and acquisitions, this is becoming more and more common. You know, I'm a big company and I'm using a particular type of, you know, database and you're a small company and you got bought out and, and corporate's going to come down and say, I'm sorry, we're no longer using Oracle because we do everything in MySQL. And so you need to come up with a system to swap out all your Oracle databases to MySQL. And you go, ah! The last one is new laws and regulations where you just basically have no choice. You got to you're going to say, ah, well, geez, I passed a new law that says I have to do that. So, okay, I need to come up with a new system. So these are like the triggers for doing this. Okay. Now we can continue on. So there is a, this thing called uh, a system or software development life cycle. I, I typically say software development life cycle, but sometimes I say system. So an SDLC, the system development life cycle. I'm going to go ahead and just pop on down to this guy. Oh, I hate it when they do that. Ah, I'm supposed to fill these goofy things out. Uh, analysis and design. In fact, I'm just going to do the three that we're doing. Okay, so we start with investigation, and then we do some analysis and design. I guess we'll go ahead and do this. Where I, then I have to to build the dang thing. I have to integrate, do integration testing, and then I have to implement it. Now. If, if you're pretty good at math, you can figure out there's there's six of these things, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And yet, if you count up the number of steps that are in chapter 12 and chapter 13, there's seven steps. So what's going on here? Well, if you Google SDLC, you'll end up, you'll get a list of five steps, six steps, seven steps. It's all the same stuff. It's just they either you know stretch things apart or lump things together. We're not talking about different cycles. We're just merely talking about the fact that some people type tend to categorize. So the first three here is what we're talking about in this chapter. Okay, I want to go over just the first three of these to make sure we got the points across. So the investigation. Investigation is describe the problem that you're trying to solve. Okay, the business problem you're trying to solve. That's what investigation is all about. Analysis is give me a list of things that it's going to have to do what are the requirements so i have the problem now i'm describing the solution and then design is exactly what do i need to do to implement that solution so first one is what's wrong what do i need to do to fix it and how am i going to fix it okay this is a good place to stop for the 15 minute mark we'll continue this in just a few